Hello and welcome to another Betfred Sports video right here in the Quest Media Network studio. Peter, let's reflect on the last round of Premier League fixtures that took place on Sunday. Manchester City went 5 alive, beating Everton 5 0. And what a great uh, final game it was for Sergio Aguero. Yeah, it was. Makes you want you start thinking again why they're getting rid of him, why they aren't signing for, for another year or two years. I mean, the guy's 32, he's. Um, Showed what City are missing mm. up front. I mean, those are strikers' goals. Um, other players wouldn't have put those goals away um, as he did. Um, I just hope this isn't going to come and bite him on the bum because yeah. if he starts playing well for Barcelona, where he's highly likely to end up, um, then he, he could punish City in the um, Champions League next season. Mm. Um, I thought the interview on TV was a bit weak as well. They, they could have said to uh, Guardiola, why are you letting him go? Yeah. They could have said to Aguero, do you want to go? Um, and it was all a bit wishy-washy for me. Mm. Um, I, I was screaming at the TV, ask him, ask him, ask him why, why he's leaving. This is the time. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, he wants to have a little bit of peace um, with his manager ahead of the final on Saturday yeah. because now he's played himself into that team he's definitely going to be on the bench that's yeah. a given yeah. because he can come and get that goal when the others can't it's okay playing without a striker but it proved again that a striker is going to make the difference and he did in that game yeah well you touched upon it then uh, the post-match interview that Pep did with Sky Sports you know, he started crying, didn't he? Very emotional. Do you think that was a case of him just getting caught up in uh, the day and the occasion, or do you think it was a little bit of regret that he's letting Aguero go? Well, I don't, he, he can't second guess his selection, and I certainly can't second guess why he cried. Mm. But I would say he sometimes goes out of his way not to be sentimental because everybody thought Aguero would have started yeah. in that game, yeah. and then taking him off to the applause near the end. Mm. He only just got on, frankly. Um, and you do wonder what would have happened if Everton had put up half a performance and then he didn't play him. He would have stuck to his guns, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the, the biggest, moving on from City, the, the biggest um, upset for me was Leicester. You've got to feel yeah. sorry for them. I mean, how Chelsea sort of sneaked their way in um, and then Liverpool ended up third. So yeah. it's not, ended up not a bad season for them, has oh, it? Yeah. Um, a great end to the season for, for Liverpool. Um, but you've got a feel for Leicester. They were in the top four virtually all season mm. uh, and then just slip out at the end. Yeah, I do feel particularly sorry for Kasper Schmeichel as well. He's been outstanding once again uh, in between the sticks for Leicester and then he goes and scores an own goal, just comes out to punch a corner and then bang, straight in the net. So I do feel sorry for him. Yeah, another player who you wonder what might have been, he could have been the City goalkeeper yeah. because they chose Joe Hart ahead of him. Um, that seems like 10 years ago now, but they, they certainly did that because mm. I, I remember at the time that thinking to myself, well, are they making the right choice? Yeah. In my opinion, Kasper Schmeichel, one of the greatest goalkeepers of all time. But we do know that City are champions once again. But looking ahead to next season, it's a long way away. But what are the odds looking like? Well, um, it won't surprise you to know that City are odds on to do it all again next season. Um, Chelsea are five to one shots. They're second favourites with Betfred. Um, United and Liverpool both six to one to win the Premier League next season. And then it really goes off the off because Leicester are forty to one. Spurs also forty to one, and Arsenal sixty six to one. They must be the longest odds ever for yeah. Arsenal going into a new season to to win the title. Yeah, been a pretty dreadful campaign for Mikel Arteta's side. But looking at one lucky person, you know we've always got good stories when it comes to winning at Betfred. But one person, Anthony Walker, he scooped thirteen grand on that final round of Premier League fixtures, predicted all ten results. Peter, a little bit more information on this. Yeah, well, I spoke to him um, last night and um, interesting character from Devizes in Wiltshire. He took 30 seconds to <laughs> sort out his coupon. Um, I asked him if he was sweating on any of the results. There were seven home wins and three away wins. He said the one that, he, that made him think, well, maybe 29 seconds, was the um, result for Chelsea at Villa. And I asked him why he went for Villa. Uh, and he said it basically it's because Villa are in such great form and uh, he thought the home home crowd yeah. would make a difference. And it did start making a difference in that, that was last match. So yeah. got so many home wins um, driving on their team. 
um, 10,000 home fans at most matches. Um, and that did have an impact at the, at the, the, right the, the last game of the season. Um, He's going to spend his money on uh, buying himself a second-hand uh, BMW. He's um, celebrated with steak, which he already had in, he said, um, last night. Um, but also, he's, um, he said he was drinking a lot more wine than he would normally <laughs> have. Um, he said he was over the moon, and it's his biggest win um, all time. Um, his last one was um, £700 in a casino five years ago. Excellent stuff, good stuff. Congratulations, Anthony Walker, on your massive win. And also, congratulations go out to Harry Kane because he has won the Golden Boot Award. He scored 23 goals this season and got 14 assists. Peter, personally, it's been a great season for him. Well, he's really reinforced the view that he is the greatest striker in the uh, Premier League uh, because he's done it again. Mm. He's got 23 uh, goals. He was equal going into the final match of the season with Mo Salah on 21 um, but it's pips him at the post and he's the golden boot winner and it's no wonder he's a man at the moment with City fans in particular thinking is he going to be the um, ready-made replacement for Aguero uh, United fans hoping that um, gonna, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to pull one out of the bag and get Harry Kane there yeah um, personally I think he's a better instant fit than Haaland will ever be because he's 27 and done the business. Yeah, he knows the league, doesn't he? Knows he knows the league. Now, yeah. But it's whether City could think um, they do need a, a, a fix at centre forward. Personally, I don't think they do. I think they should have kept with uh, Aguero. Well, that's another story. Um, I think United would benefit from him as well. Um, if he goes abroad, which Tottenham always say they want their players to do so they're not going to be challenging them again in the mm. Premier League. Uh, PSG are the favourites um, for his signature. But Harry Kane started off at the beginning of the season as 6-1 to one to win the Golden Boot. He was right up there amongst the favourites. So we have had a lot of winners, but like hundreds of winners, mm. on Harry Kane with the Golden Boot, but not that much money right. uh, because he was 6-1 to one at the beginning. And of course that um, um, was cut and cut and cut as he honed in on, on winning the title. Yeah, well, like I said then, Harry Kane's had a great season. Congratulations to him. But who will he be playing for next season? Will it be Manchester City? Will it be Manchester United? I'm sure the latter will be hoping it's them. And looking at their final game of the season, they travel to Wolves, 1-2-1. Peter, good result really going into this uh, Europa League final on Wednesday. Yeah, I was surprised at that result. Um, uh, I should have taken the word from, uh, from Anthony because I did think that Wolves would do the business with the manager saying he's going to leave and also United playing the scratch team. Yeah. But they pulled it out again, 2-1, um, and some of the kids who had played so well, um, they won't figure a doubt in the um, Wednesday's final um, against Villarreal mm. um, in, in Poland. Um, and Betfred have United odds on 4-9 to, nine to uh, lift the trophy. Uh, in Poland on Wednesday, uh, Villarreal seven to four, um, Cavani and Fernandez are the um, equal uh, ten to three to score the first goal. Rashford five to one, I think that's a half decent bet. Greenwood, who always seems to be popping him in, is six to one to score the first goal with Betfred. United to win to nil, that's um, a popular one, fifteen to eight. And if you're particularly into the score lines, United to win two nil, that's seven to one. 3-0 is 14 to 1. And get this interesting fact, United have played Villarreal four times and each match has ended up 0-0. Four times in the whole history of football between the pair of them, it's always ended up 0-0. And it's 15 to 2 with Betfred but it's nil-nil after 90 minutes. Well, I hope for one that it's not destined to be a nil-nil. No, we don't want that. We want an action-packed game. But, Peter, very quickly, let's touch up on the European Championships. Uh, England squad set to be announced on Tuesday. Uh, it's going to be an exciting one, this, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, we always get a lot of patriotic punters um, going for England, and England are 5-1 to one to um, win the trophy. They're equal favourites with France. Uh, Wales are 125-1. to one. Scotland are, are out there with the um, outsiders at 250 to 1, um, along with Hungary. Macedonia, the rank outsiders, they're 500 to 1. Harry Kane, you can't keep him out of the news, he's 5 to 1 favourite to be the top scorer. Lukaku, um, ex of United, of course, he's 8 to 1. Ronaldo, 9 to 1. 
Mbappe is uh, nine to one. Player of the tournament, oh that's Mbappe, Betfred Alina, nine to one. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, um, he's ten to one to be player of the tournament. Um, and name the finalists, that's a popular one. England v France, 14 to one. There we go then. So I for one can't wait for the European Championships. I think they're taking place, is it in three weeks time now? June, yeah, uh, June 11th, right. isn't well, it? The, the squad's out on Tuesday, as you say, and we're going to have um, a new market there because the squad's increased in size. Um, I think it's 26 players they can uh, say now, uh, nominate now. Uh, we're going to have a new market where it's the starting team. Who's going to be in that 11 when they start? And that is a lot of speculation about that. Foden and Mason mm -hmm. Mount, who's going to be up front with Harry Kane. Um, goalkeeper situation, Pickford looks like he's landed it now with, with uh, Pope being injured. Yeah. Um, and then there's at the back, will Harry Maguire make it? Will he make it for Wednesday? Touch and go, yeah. Uh, and there's questions about his pace, whether they'll, they'll go with him against players like Mbappe. Yeah, well, hopefully it will be a cracking tournament. You know, last year it was cancelled, so there's a lot to look forward to. And if you do want to punt on the European Championships, I'm sure there's loads of markets on Betfred's website. Well, there most certainly is, yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's been great to be joined by you again once again, Peter. Um, you're not here on Friday, are you? You're having a no. well-deserved rest? Yeah, I am, yeah. Um, caravan for me on Friday. Um, but I'll be back next week. Brilliant stuff. Enjoy your time. And like I said, then, if you do fancy a punt on uh, any of the sports that we do mention on Sports Talk, Betfred stores are now open, uh, and you can also bet online and via their app.